What's going on? If you're MIG toe or red pill, you're probably gonna wanna sit this one out because you'll be just throwing rocks at the computer screen. But I'm here to tell you that the divorce statistic that all marriages, 50% of marriages end the divorce is simply untrue. I've been doing some research. The divorce rate has been dropping. The divorce rate currently holds at 39%. So that means that 61% of the people who are getting married are staying married. Also, this is a biggie. If you are educated and you have money before you get married, the divorce rate is like 20%. Let me say that again. If you have money before you get married, the divorce rate is 20% and dropping. Now, I know that there are many people who poo poo on marriage. At Savage Finance, the videos I have talking about personal finance for couples don't do that well. And I begin to understand why, because the audience over there, I look at what does well at Savage Finance. The no credit check, credit cards and business loans do very well at Savage Finance. So I have a bunch of people who are not in a financial position and over time that will change. The audience will turn a little bit, but today's conversation is about marriage and the felonious lies about marriage. One of the things that is happening that this pandemic has exposed is there are many people who were married who shouldn't have been married and they're going to get divorced. The divorce rates are skyrocketing, um, domestic, abuse went through the roof during the pandemic. But let's go ahead and talk about marriage because one of the things that is happening, um, typically, you know, I'll speak about myself. There were two women I could have married who were significantly younger than me. And they introduced me to their friends and I met the parents and everything. And one of the things that's going to happen is older men with money are going to be able to marry younger women and nobody's going to say boo about it. Give you a classic example. Remember when Jerry Seinfeld was dating this 18 year old when he was like 42? Remember that? And her parents were cool with it. See, if you're an old man messing around with a tender young chicken and you have no money, you have no pedigree, People have a problem with that. But Hugh Hefner, Jerry Seinfeld, many men have shown over and over again that if you have status, money, you can marry a younger woman and no one's gonna give a boot. But for some reason, I've been looking at why is there so much conversation against marriage? And I've been looking at the red pill in the MGTOW communities. This is a community of men with little to no accomplishment. Let me say that again. This is a community of men with little to no accomplishment. So, you know, you make a million dollars a year and you get divorced. Your lifestyle isn't going to change that much. You make $30,000 a year and you get put on child support for two kids. That's going to be like a third or almost half of what you bring home. Your life is going to change drastically. So the conversation is poor people should not be getting married because of the penalty that if you're poor, I remember when I was married and I got divorced and I was poor and the child support was slapping me upside the head, but I was poor. I wasn't making any money. And once I started to make money, the child support really wasn't even a factor in my life. I mean, it was the least expensive bill I had once I started making money. And this is one of the things I want to bring to you. Just like my video, the black community, the first agenda should be making money. You as a man, your first agenda should be getting financially situated for yourself. I remember posting, I don't need to make, I'm perfectly happy making this low income because I don't need to make 100K a year because someone may like me. And I, I, that, that statement still sticks out. I saw it on a video many, many years ago. Men have become kind of useless. 
See, I, I also blame this to a lot of men being born in single mother homes without a leadership role model. One of the things that a lot of men want to be treated like women in terms of the dating relationship. And women want to be treated special and unique in the dating terms relationship. And right now there is probably, this is one of the worst periods of time for dating because the women have an agenda, the men have an agenda and nobody wants to play their position anymore. Women don't want to be helpmates. I have a video on disruptive male. Women want to get married, but they're not interested in being a wife. Being a wife comes with a lot of responsibility. Being a wife comes with a lot of duties. They want the wedding, they want the baby, but they don't want the duties. And essentially, a lot of men want to be adored, worshiped, and have a submissive woman, but they don't want to build a kingdom for this woman to be submissive in. So on the women's side, you have a lot of laziness. And on the men's side, you have a lot of laziness because people don't want to build. Someone put up a comment on my Kenneth Chenault video talking about, you know, Kenneth Chenault, he got married, it was a different era. I'm here to tell you, if you have the right pedigree, you can get married to a high quality woman today quite easily. They're looking, they're desperate. If you show up as a high value, high quality man, and this is a high value, high quality woman, you will quickly realize your worth. But essentially, there are so many people, because essentially what is happening is the poor people with no agenda, with no plan, with no pedigree, with no grooming, are messing up the institution of marriage. They're going out, they're having sex, they're having children, they're getting married, and no one knows what to do. No one, like, big mama's gone, the grandparents are gone, people don't have parents to look up to anymore. So essentially, what is happening is we have many different levels of marriage. The elites are getting married. Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, after he signed that $400 million contract, he asked his long-term girlfriend to get married. Why did he do that? He saw his father be married. He saw his father have a very good life. His father, who I think is like close to 50 or maybe 50, I don't know, looks much younger than he really is because he's had a stress-free lifestyle that was forged by being married to a good woman and raising good children. Once again, you will see people with money getting married. And you will have people out here with no money joining MGTO, joining red pill communities, and talking about, I'm going to be living the free agent lifestyle, which is antisocial behavior. You know when you're born, you, you crave to be close to people. When you're a little bitty baby and you're laying in that crib and you're screaming your head off, you are comforted when your mother picks you up. You're comforted when your father picks you up. We were not designed to be free agent lifestyle. We were not designed to act or to be that way. We were not designed for that. So you have all of these mig toe red pill men talking about no co cohabitation, no marriage, no long-term relationships, just Hit it and quit it and move on. This is creating a bad look for society. Now, I have some stuff to talk about with me. When my first digital product was doing really well, I started to have a lot of fun. And for me, it was an experiment to see what I can do, to see what I can get to have. And now that I've gone through that, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I don't really wanna do that anymore because essentially I would recommend that you as a young man in your 20s, you need to date a lot, 
So you figure out what you like and what you don't like and be exposed to situations. And what do I mean by dating? You actually meet a woman, form a relationship, and work on dating. Now, many of the MGTOW and Red Pill channels are promoting pump and dump. Essentially, you get with a woman, you have sex with her two or three times, then you move on to the next one. The average man is not gonna be capable of pulling it off long term. The average man doesn't have enough game to continue to do that, but this is being pushed and recommended by the Red Pill in MGTOW communities. And this is something that isn't being pushed by the MGTOW and Red Pill communities. Personal success. You will hear some people talk about getting on your purpose, making money, but they more, that's kind of like an afterthought. There isn't, I talk more about men starting businesses, becoming wealthy before they get married than anyone else here on YouTube. I'm the only one that's really talking about that because let's look at the audience. The audience here on YouTube as reflected by which videos do really well on Savage Finance are based upon people who don't have any money. So if you want to have a successful marriage as a man, you need to get money before you get married. I've been preaching that for the last 10 years. Fellas, start a business, build yourself. When I started Disrupting Mail, I first said, if you want a girlfriend, you want to get married, I helped you. I never disavowed marriage, but there are so many people who don't talk about marriage because they don't want to build a better and greater society. This is the selfishness that's on the female and the male side. It's all about me. It's all about what I want and I'm not willing to compromise. Many people see compromise as settling. And as you become older, you become to realize that settling and compromise are two different things. Compromise, so let's say you're a woman, you want a man who's six foot two, but you marry a man who's five seven. That's a compromise because only like 10% of the world's population of male population is six two and above. When you get to six two, I mean, it, it, it dramatically goes down. Now, settling is when you marry someone you know isn't good for you. That's settling. And th this is a, a really, really big part because one of the things I'm gonna be talking about here in Old Savage Finance is about marriage and how to have a good marriage. I have a course, it is, it's called Disruptive Mating. How to get a girlfriend, how to set all that up. It's one of my oldest courses. I think that course is five or six years old. So I've been on this and I haven't been as vocal in talking about it the way that I'm talking about it. Because we all talk about generational wealth. If you're not married and you don't have any kids, who are you gonna leave the money to? The state is gonna get your money. You're gonna be doing all this work to benefit the state. Or you can come up with a plan and I recommend that you as a man you go ahead and you get yourself together and you get yourself established before marriage. And that's a very old and antiquated notion because a man used to have to go to the woman's family with a dowry and he had to purchase her. He had to be established before he got married to afford that dowry. And I feel, and this is another reason that marriage rates are dropping. Millennials are getting married and staying married. You wanna know why? Because they've seen the carnage of divorce. They've, they know what that does to the kids. They know what that does to the whole family dynamic. And they're trying to be better than their parents because divorce is nasty. Divorce is an ugly thing. Divorce leaves many wounds. It really does and it just disturbs the whole ecosystem. And this is why I said, if I ever get married again, I'm not getting divorced. I'm not getting divorced. I'm not, you know, cause also I have a better vetting process. I was dating someone who wanted to get married. She vocalized getting married, but in terms of a long-term suitability, I mean, you know, she was a younger girl, she was beautiful, she was fun, the sex was amazing, but 
you need more than that for a successful long-term marriage. And there was another girl I was dating who was better intellectually for me. And you know, so I have a good ideal of what I need. And this is comes from dating lots of women. I'm going to need that intellectual stimulation. I'm going to need that kinky sex. I'm going to need all of that because there are many women who feel that if they just bring sex to the table, that's enough. That's not enough for a high value man. Ladies, it ain't. You're going to have to come to the table with more than just your poo nanny. And this is one of the things that I have always done. I've always practiced this. I have never let a woman come between me and money. If I got to do something to make money or I can be with her, I'm going to choose to make the money. I've always been like that. And anyone I date has to understand there, there is a priority in my life because I, I'm, I'm going to tell you the number of women I've dated that they would see that I was working would want to have sex during the middle of the day. And part of that is, and I have a videos talking about this on disruptive male, that a woman will define your manhood in her best interest, because essentially you will be judged based upon what they want out of you versus being a true dominant masculine man that handles business. And like, I was like, you know, this is work hours. This is what needs to happen during work hours. And the mature woman would understand that. But many of these younger women, they don't understand that. So I have to make some adjustments because I'm gonna have to go a little older to get that balance that I need because for the last few years, I've been dating women in their 20s, which has been a lot of fun, been a lot of fun. But it is rare that you're gonna meet someone that young that is gonna be suitable for a long-term arrangement because they're so used to men simping, like all these chicks who are going to OnlyFans. These men are paying these women outrageous sums of money for doing absolutely nothing. And on Disruptive Mail, I have a video why your woman must have responsibilities, why your woman has to do some things, why your woman has to bring something to the table. Because if you're dealing with a woman who has no responsibilities, who has nothing she has to do for you, what is she in your life for? If you're building a long-term relationship, the woman needs to have responsibilities and duties in taking care and looking after you. And this is, comes back to my video, a lot of women wanna get married, but they're not interested in being wives because of the laziness. They don't wanna do anything. They don't wanna be responsible for anything. But what is happening is the valuable women are being plucked up very quickly because many men are beginning to understand that when they find a good one, you need to go ahead and wipe that up because there's so much trash out here. Just because you're beautiful, once again, Bailey. Bailey was out, Bailey was gorgeous, but Bailey had low impulse control, Bailey had multiple arrests. When you see a girl that's that beautiful who's getting arrested, Normally cops let chicks like that go just to show you about her low impulse control and her radical nature. So in closing marriage, the marriage rate, if you dive into the stats, marriage rate, the divorce rate is going down. People are getting married, they're staying married and they're building healthy, beautiful families. And if you want to be a participant of generational wealth, that's what you gotta do. So all of my dudes, you know, cause I'm adjusting the content for disruptive male. I'm giving you the game. I'm giving you the elements of female nature so you can arm yourself. So you can be out here on a level playing field. So you know what you're dealing with. And honestly, there are just many women who are not worth marrying. But once again, this comes from game and this comes from understanding the game. And this comes from knowing what the situation is. So if you want to be a participant in building a strong, healthy family and knowing and developing generational wealth, you got to go ahead and put that together and you got to live in reality 
because many of these MGTOW and red pill men are not living in reality and they're indoctrinating young men who've not gone through anything into the fold, which is sad. You got 18, 19 year old men. I ain't gonna never get married. I ain't gonna never live with a woman because this is what this older MGTOW hurt, broke down, wounded man has put out into the internet because essentially there is a duality of being a man and understanding female nature. But there is also a greater level if you want to be happy, if you want to have a family, if you want to build something. Because one of the things that's really something I saw working in the hospital, no one wants to be alone when they're old. And I used to visit older people when I was a kid and it was hard getting out of there because they, they were lonely. And if you continue this antisocial behavior, you're gonna be one of those cat men with the floral couches. Because we got a lot of men who are gonna be alone, who are not gonna have anybody because they have bad habits. And this is, you know, and I don't want this to be you because one of the reasons that I have lived with women is I know myself. And I know that if I had not lived with women, I wouldn't be able to live with a woman because of my ways. Cause I've, I've done things prior up to this to create the pathway to getting married, to being able to live with someone. Cause there's a lot of folks who are so used to living on their own, doing what they want, when they want, how they want, that they are unmarriageable. That you, you, you can't, they, they, they cannot form a partnership because they've been alone so, for so long. And this is one of the reasons that I consistently had girlfriends because I understand what happens to a person. Your habits define you. And there are many people who have bad habits who cannot actually be in a relationship, which you need to be able to be in a relationship before you get married. And this is one of the things, because I'm probably gonna do a course on that for the disruptive men who want to build something and create beautiful, strong families. So that's all I got for you. If you want to go ahead and get some money so you can be properly positioned to get married, go below and join the corporate toolbox. This will kick off. This is kicking off this month. There's a lot of information there for you to go and I'll be building it out over the next few months. You can get in for $2,400 or you can get in for $150 per month right now. The link's below. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.